Hi. If you're listening to this in mono, it's just noise. In stereo, it's a cool effect. But in quad, you're in the middle of a storm. And if that's what spatial modulation can do to noise, imagine what it can do to the rest of your music. Now, YouTube doesn't support quad, so you probably won't get what the fuss is about by listening to this. But if you create music, you've got to try listening to or creating music with spatial motion, preferably quadraphonic. In this video, I'll show you four ways to create quadraphonic music using digital audio workstations on a computer, using modular Eurorack, on VCV rack, virtual modular, and in an environment geared towards performance hardware or DAWless setups. If you want to hear some of the music made here in quad, it'll be available on my Patreon. But let's go through the easiest ways that you can get this going. Okay, before I talk about actual techniques, let's talk about what you need in terms of hardware. The first thing is obviously four speakers. Now, while of course it's best to have four identical high quality speakers, each perfectly placed in a square around you, I think it's better just to grab any speakers you can for starters rather than not try at all. The second thing you need is hardware to hook those speakers up to. Now, unless we're talking about a modular setup, it's an audio interface with at least four outputs, unless your computer has built-in surround support, in which case it should have two stereo outputs, one for the front speakers and another one for the rear speakers. Now, audio interfaces with four outputs aren't cheap, but your audio interface may support four speakers without you knowing it. For example, while it may seem like the Machino Mark III only has two mono outputs, you can actually send two additional channels through its headphone outputs. The third thing you need is some sort of software to spin audio around the four speakers. Now, Reactor has a free plugin called Tom's Surround Panner, which is nice. And I know some DAWs like Logic have built-in surround support, but I created the intro jam using Ableton Live, so let's take a look at that and at the Surround Panner tool, which is a free download if you have Max for Live. Now, let's start with a quick overview of the project I played at the beginning of this clip. Most of these tips will apply to other DAWs as well. The intro sound, the little storm I cooked up, is a simple swirling noise. Now, rather than spin this manually, I hooked up an LFO to it with a sawtooth wave, which basically makes it spin in a circle. And I also added another small LFO to modulate the cutoff frequency of the filter with a little bit of resonance. Now, you could, of course, automate these parameters using traditional modulation, but I like these LFOs and they feel more natural to me. So let's take a deeper look at the Surround Panner plugin. It basically has either manual control or three parameters with which you can move the sound around, either XY, which you can control with a joystick, with a MIDI joystick if you like, or rotation, which if I take this out to the extreme, will spin this around, and that is what I was modulating with the LFO. Focus is another important parameter that will determine how many speakers get impacted by the point in space at which the sound resides. And if your modulation is jumping all over the place, then smooth will make those transitions smooth. Beside that, you've got a very nice visual display of which speaker your audio is being routed to over here. And you can choose to send the audio anywhere you want within the project. I chose to route the audio through the sends and then into these tracks so that I can record the audio as well. And then from here, they go out directly to the speakers 
I'm not going through the master at all. So that's scene one. Scene two is a drum loop. This song is a cover of Ghosts 9 by Nine Inch Nails. This is a brief sample from that song. And then a 606 core kit playing in another, along with the um, Byte plugin from Native Instruments. And the modulation here, as you can see, is a random LFO, which is synced to the tempo of the project. And that's causing the beats to jump around directly in sync with the tempo. Okay, let's move on to the piano. Here I've got four tracks. And the reason I have four tracks is that you can see each track is sending a note to a different speaker. The sound itself is the American Grey Road preset from Arturia's Piano V2. And the reason I have four tracks is that I wanted each note to ring out in its own separate speaker. Now, editing uh, a whole tune across four tracks can be a pain, but Ableton has a nice feature where you can select multiple tracks and then see all the notes of each track together in one place. So it's really easy to edit notes, move them around, and see the big picture of your tune just like this. And then the fourth and final track is the lovely Haken Continuum. Here I was modulating the XY position using the expressive E touche, MIDI mapped to left right using CC99, up down using CC98. Very simply just controlling the XY position. Now it wasn't easy doing both, both controlling the spatial modulation and playing the continuum live, but there's just something about controlling sound manually that makes it more alive in my opinion. Okay, let's talk about quadraphonic options using a modular system. The simplest and most cost-effective way that I found to create spatial motion with modular, especially if you already have VCAs, which you should, is using either the Dopefer A144 or you can use the Mutable Instruments frames instead. The idea is to take one audio output, split it to four different VCAs, then take those four outputs, send them to your four speakers, and gradually shift the levels between the speakers to create spatial motion. Now a module like this is perfect for that because it can take a linear motion of control voltage and distribute it gradually across four speakers. It is limited, but it works. So let's check out what this sounds like. I'll plug it, say into here, play a sample, and then I can move that sample between the four speakers. All the samples in this segment, by the way, are courtesy of Robin Fisher from Scar Polish. Now to keep that running on an ongoing basis, all I need to do is to plug in an LFO to modulate this motion. The reason I'm using ether here is because you have to find the particular spot where there are no dead zones. So I can search for that using this. Right here it's too quiet, so sound starts here. And then rotates through the speakers and disappears around here. All right, so from minus six or five point seven volts in this case to plus three. And then I could record this motion here, like this. I can loop it back and forth if I want, or just have it repeat. And then I've got a nice gradual motion. Now, of course, you can control this with any other LFO, whether time synced or not. If you don't have a module like this, which lets you control voltages in a very specific way, you can use maths, for example, set an LFO range, attenuate it, and then add voltages to get to this particular range. So this is nice, but quite limiting because you're stuck with one degree of separation between the speakers, which leaves out a crucial aspect of spatial modulation, which is distance, and that's where the ADAC 803 comes in. So whereas this lets you control just the angle, the 803 adds in both distance and timbre control.
So let me clear this because there are a lot fewer cables involved. I only need one cable to connect the output to any one of these two inputs. One of them can be attenuated and the other can't. And then I'll just connect my speakers. One thing to note when you're hooking up your speakers is that uh, the two front channels, one and two, go into one and two, which is fairly natural. Channel three uh, is typically in these kinds of setups, the back right speaker. So it needs to be connected into here if you're going to stereo rear pair. And then channel four will be connected to speaker number three, which is the one on the rear left. So here I've got rotation control, and you've got lights to show you where the audio is going. And then distance, right, so up close, you're really hearing the audio all the time, regardless of the angle. And the farther away it goes, the more it is spatially modulated. So that's how you control radius or distance and angle. This also has a Cartesian or XY mode if you want to hook it up to a joystick like the Expressive E that I showed you before, but typically I think it's nicer to work in polar mode. Now the last nifty feature that I wanted to show you about the 803 is its ability to impact timbre as a function of the distance of the sound from the center. So what I want to do is pass my sound through an effect and have the dry wet uh, mix of that effect be controlled by the 803. Now I could do that with the ZDSP, but I wanted to show you how to use external effects like Suzanne Chiani and I spoke about in uh, the previous episode of this series. And I'll use ALM's SBG for this. And the idea is that you route your audio through an external effect and modulate it using a floating ring cable and control voltage. Now for that, you've got to bring your audio down from Eurorack levels to regular levels and then bring it back up. And of course, safely connect control voltage to the expression input. And this module basically takes care of all of that. Now I'll route my audio back into the 803. And the last piece of the puzzle is to apply modulation to the external effect using one of the distance functions. I'll try this one. And now you can see as I increase the distance, the mix level of the effect goes up. As I reduce it, it goes down. So let's hear what this sounds like. The farther the sound, the more reverb in the mix. This works, by the way, both in XY mode and in polar mode. Let's try a different effect. Here, the delay time changes based on distance. Okay, so having one sound move around in space is nice, but a little bit boring. To add more depth, it's better to have at least two sounds in different places, preferably more, and look first at a simple example in stereo, and then multiply that into quad. So in stereo, life is much simpler. Obviously, you hook up left and right to your speakers. Now, you can use regular stereo mixers, but for spatial motion, Pan Mix here has a few cool features. I'll take one audio source just to give you an example. So Penmix lets you bring in up to six sources and not only control their level, but also their position in stereo space. And you can also modulate either the level or the position in space using control voltage. Now you can use any LFO, but for more precise motion, I'll use ether here controlled by the Parrot Plus app. So the idea is that I can take any sound and control it in the stereo field. And I can also record motions, which will then be repeated here. And as long as you're limiting yourself to stereo, you can have up to six different motions or placements in space here. So let's bring all this together now that we know how to move objects in space and how to bring together multiple motions into one big mega patch. And by the way, I always prefer to put my patches together in reverse, much faster this way. Okay, on to the last and probably the most flexible but complicated setup with a lot more control, but obviously taking up more space. 
The idea here is to route all the audio into two stereo mixers or four mono mixers or any combination of them like I have here. One stereo mixer, the pan mix, and two mono mix verters. Pan mix represents the front speakers, front left and front right, and the mix verters represent rear left and rear right. What this particular arrangement does is let me have up to three fully quadraphonic sources moving around in space or up to six different sources sitting up front and eight sources sitting in the back or any combination of them. What I actually set up is two quadraphonic modulators, one coming in from the Morph controller and VCA and another from the ADAC 803. Each of these two spatial modulators has four cables running into each of the four speakers, so that's eight inputs taken up by these two. And in addition to these two quadraphonic motions, I have a stereo front motion going out of here into the left and right through pan mix. So the background bass loop sits up front, but going into different speakers as placed through here. I didn't pan it full left and full right, but sort of put it somewhere, not to the edge, but not in the center. And then all these little effects are just rotating in space. I've got ether controlled by Parrot. This is the rotation of the top spatial modulator. This is the rotation of the bottom one. This determines how far the sounds are from us. This is up close. And this is the farther they get. I'm gonna keep it around here. So Bitbox has four outputs. I could have used each output for a different speaker. Rather, like I said before, I'm using these two outputs to place the bass up front. The percussion is going through a delay into one of the ADAC inputs, and then all the effects are going directly into the other. So Bitbox is spatialized through this and stereoized through this. The bass line and the drums are sequenced by PAM's workout. This is just a mult triggering the different drum loops. And then on top of that, I have a solo sequenced by hair mode kept in sync via MIDI from this expansion to Pam's workout. Sequencing rings going into ZDSP and then going out to my top spatial modulator. I can mute the drums in and out through here through this one control. So that's it in terms of this setup. I could have used uh, Pam to have a sample and hold or random spatial modulation like I did in the Ableton demo, but I just prefer to keep it simple with two modulations, one, like I said, for the solo and one for all the effects. So to hear what this sounds like, these are always circling around us. Right. This starts the bass loops, which sit up front. I can bring in the solo through here, either dry or shimmered through space. Drums can be unmuted using this. They wait a cycle and then start. They're rotating in space as well. I can keep on pressing these effects as much as I want. Bring the solo back in. Mute the drums, add a shimmer, some more effects. So I think a system like this, uh, especially if you fill in the cracks with whatever you want, filters, VCAs, more sounds, or anything else, can be a really nice and flexible quadraphonic modular performance platform. To complete the modular picture, two other interesting modules you should definitely look at are the Coma Poltergeist and of course the Buchla 227E. Now I don't think you necessarily need four separate channels. I think two is great and three is pushing it. And these modules are <laughs> certainly not cheap, but they do cut down on the cables and number of individual modules you need. Okay. Now that we are spatial professionals, let's take a look at VCV Rack, which is a nice way to do everything I showed you in the modular section, and you get to keep both kidneys. So for this segment, I reached out to my VCV guru, Omri Cohen, and asked him to make a patch for this clip, and he did, so here it is. Now, I won't go through this and explain it because there's quite a lot going on here. I will leave a link to it below in case you wanna try it out. 
Now, VCV Rack has a few options for spatial control, but the best one is probably the quad panner from Nicey, which has quite a few options. And it also lets you chain modules one to the other if you want. But since stuff is free here, I put everything through mixers so I'd have individual control over everything I want. Let's zoom into a quad panner just to take a look at what it can do. So as you can see, you've got both Cartesian and polar control. There's a swirl option, just like the Buchla 227Es, with a few configurable options. And like I said before, you can chain these modules. So let's hear what this patch sounds like. Two speakers up. Two more. And if I lower down the components, you can hear them one by one. So we've got this motion here, then this. It's a nice touch to move the wet part of the effect separately from the dry part. The bass line has its own smooth rotation. And the lead moves here. So overall, a really beautiful patch from Omri. I'll leave a link to his channel below. We'll listen to this for a bit more. And then move on to the next frontier, which is Dallas Quadraphonic. Okay, we talked about using a DAW, we talked about modular, both virtual and real, but what if you just want to jam with your gear? Wouldn't it be cool to have a quadraphonic pocket operator? Especially on gear like this, which has stereo outputs and you can pan certain sounds to the left and certain to the right, you could take each of the left and right channels and move them around separately in space, essentially creating dual quadraphonic motions. Well, unfortunately, I'm not familiar with a standalone Dallas Quadraphonic Spatializer. If you know of one or manufacture one now or in the future, please feel free to leave a link to it in the comments and I'll add it to the description. So until the day someone makes one, let's look at a few alternatives. One alternative is, if you don't mind having a computer nearby, is to create a DAW or VCV project where its sole purpose is to be a MIDI-controlled spatializer. Now, you could use the DAW techniques that I showed you before, but in order to keep costs as low as possible, let me show you a simple project in VCV Rack that can get the job done for you. Now, the cool thing about VCV Rack is that it's free, thanks to the efforts of Andrew Belt, its creator, and the people who create virtual modules for it. Now, you don't need to understand modular for this patch to work for you. If you know how to connect cables to a mixer, you'll know how to use this project. The setup is really simple. All you need is this running on a Mac PC or Linux box and an audio interface with four outputs and two or more inputs. On the project itself, the only thing you really need to change is the audio interface. Make sure it's running on whatever you're using. To control the motion, you'll need a MIDI interface. I'm using the MIDI capabilities of the Digitone here. We need to map these buttons to the controls on the interface. And the way to do that is very quickly apply MIDI Learn to each of the knobs. Now that that's set up, the mouse is gone. You can ignore the computer. I'll keep the screen around to show you what's going on. Each of these scopes represents one of four inputs. These scopes represent the quadraphonic outputs, front left, front right, rear left, rear right. These four panners represent the motion of each of these four inputs in space. Now I've set this pair to be controlled differently from this pair. These two receive simple XY controls. The first two knobs represent this XY and the second two knobs represent this XY. You could, of course, use a MIDI touchpad instead of these knobs. So as I move these knobs, I will get the appropriate XY or Cartesian motion. So these are best used with a joystick or touchpad. These two panners are set to have polar and distance controls. 
So for each of them, I can control distance and rate, either crazy fast or slow and faster, farther, slower and nearer. The final thing you need to worry about is which inputs you're using and which outputs you're using. Here I've got inputs 1, 2, 3, and 4 connected. I'm really only using 3 and 4 for the digitone. And I've got speakers front left, front right, back left, back right, through inputs 1, 2, 5, and 6. If your speakers are connected differently, just grab this and drag it to where it should be. Okay, let's check out which pattern we'll be spatializing. Right, so we've got this. Now what I've done here is hard pan each of the tracks to different channels, the different speakers essentially. Tracks one, three, and four are panned hard right, and track two panned hard left. So now if I mute these three, I've got the hats going on here. Let's start moving them in space. They're coming in through channel three, which is controlled by these two. So I'll start giving it some distance and some swirl. And you can see how the audio is rotating amongst the different speakers. Now I can unmute the other tracks. So they're all coming in through channel four. Right now they're just dead center. Let's start moving them around. Give them some distance from the center. Then have them slowly rotate. So you can see how it's quite easy to create two separate motions and spread them separately across four speakers. So hopefully that's dollless enough for you. I think that what would be really interesting if somebody would take this and put it on something like this, a Raspberry Pi, and then basically this and some duct tape around your audio interface and you've got a quadraphonic spatializer. Now, I haven't tried doing it because this is good enough for me, but if somebody does and wants to leave a link to the project in the comments, I'd be happy to add it to the description. So that's pretty much it for now. If you want to have all these tips plus everything else I know about synths, they're in my incomplete book of electronic music ideas, tips and tricks on my Patreon. Please check out part one of this series, which is my interview with Suzanne Ciani, an amazing performer whose Buchla performances are always in quad. If you learned something, please hit like, subscribe, and ring the YouTube bell if you want to see more. Thanks very much for watching.